got Mr. Satish Pai, the managing director, joining in. Thank you for taking time out. Let's start off by talking about the impact of COVID-19. What has been the capacity that Hindalco has been operating at? Have you ramped it up now, particularly for aluminium and copper? The first thing uh, would be nice to say that majority of the uh, Hindalco operations ran right through the uh, lockdown uh, because we are a continuous process industry and the government gave us the exemption to run. Now, we had to do a lot of planning and we started that early February and hence the four smelters, the Utkal refinery, we have been running them all through the crisis. So it's the the Hage copper smelter, as well as some of the smaller downstream plants, we had to shut down during the lockdown, but they also have restarted now. So I think the lesson that we learned from all of this is that uh, you need to be having your emergency response plans in place. You need to prepare well in advance. You need to have uh, your uh, inventories and your raw materials planning done properly. And then you can run your operations through crisis. So I think that this is probably the sum total of the COVID that you have learned, that it's all about planning. And it's all about having your people ready for these type of exigencies that can come. Right. Uh, getting a move on, aluminum prices as well, they've tanked to about $14.50. Do you, and you have hedged positions. And there was also that a factor of the rupee depreciation. So taking all of this into account, what is your average realization? Uh, have you used any hedging gains that the company has managed to realize? I, I can't give you the exact uh, numbers that we sold at, uh, but what I can tell you is that at 1,039 crores aluminum EBITDA, we were 3% higher than the quarter four of FY19, where the LME was you know, closer to 2,000 uh, whereas it was about 16, 90 years. So what that tells you is that, as you said, our cost of production was probably one of the lowest. So we were, uh, we had some good tailwinds from coal prices being down, input costs being down, and also we had some good hedging positions. So both of those combined gave us uh, a, a very good EBITDA, which was 3% higher than Q4 of FY19. Now, this could have been even better, but the second half of March, we lost some sales when the lockdown happened. Normally, the uh, last few weeks of a quarter and uh, year-ending quarter, our sales are probably the highest. So both aluminum and copper lost out in two weeks of sales in the March second half. Otherwise, I think our quarter four numbers would have been even better than what you have seen in our results. Karunya as well joining in. Could you tell us what uh, capacity did the Muri plant operate in at uh, uh, during Q4 and how did it aid in integrating your operations and also bringing down costs? Going forward, how much uh, will utilization increase in Q1 and Q2? If you could shed some light on that as well. As you said, uh, uh, in the last quarter when we discussed, Muri was just ramping up again. So in Q4, Muri ran at 80% capacity. So it certainly helped because, you know, the previous quarters, the, uh, our cost, because we had to import some alumina, it was a drag on our results. So in quarter four, Muri was operating at 80% capacity. And hence, it certainly helped our integrated cost of aluminum production. You are right to say that in April, we had to shut it down again, but we have now in the first week of June restarted uh, Muri as well again. So we are hoping that Muri will then come back to its capacity by the end of this month. So Muri is running uh, fine again after the uh, lockdown. 60 to 65% of your coal requirement is via captive sources. So how much can it go up to if you could tell us that and uh, how, will it, how will it contribute in bringing down your costs further? See, 60% of our coal actually comes from Coal India. And uh, Coal India in Q4, the availability of coal and the pricing of coal was very good for us. And in the COVID times, the coal ministry has taken some very proactive steps. They have reduced the premium that was charged on captive uh, 
coal users compared to the IPPs. They have allowed flexibility in changing between road and rail. So the amount of coal availability as well as the auction prices of coal have moderated down. So even in Q1, we are going to see a, a lot of benefit of those coal prices going forward. I, I think we really have to thank the coal ministry for that. And uh, what's your view on the recent mining reforms that, that were introduced, especially the ones relating to joint uh, auction of bauxite and coal blocks? How would Hindalco be interested in that? Can you tell us? See, I think overall, uh, in the last few months, the Ministry of Mines and the Ministry of Coal, uh, which is, by the way, under the same minister, Prahlad Joshi, uh, has done an amazing job in coming out with reforms. And I think that, you know, we are very much interested in the commercial coal block auctions that will happen. Uh, we are so happy that there is uh, the differentiation between captive mines and non-captive mines has been taken away. So that it's, you know, all coal mines are now in some ways, uh, you can use it for yourself, you can sell it to third party, the government just wants a revenue share. I think this is very positive for the mining industry. The fact that you can have an exploration to PL to ML type of licenses, all this, the, the mining industry has been asking for a long time. So we are extremely happy. Now, coal and bauxite being uh, auctioned together, fantastic. I think we will be very interested. I think it will take them some time to get that package ready. I think the immediate auctions are going to be of coal blocks that we are going to participate in. So overall, I think a great set of reforms and we urge the government to very quickly action all that they have announced. And uh, we from the industry are 